follow Bookworm Satibra's Den. My name is Whitney and I have an update for the ABC Author Challenge. Uh, I've got a reading update so I'm going to be talking about two different books. I actually read these for the Festive Readathon. I just filmed that video. That one should be out before this one so definitely go check that out if you want to, you know, hear my thoughts on the other books I read for the, the readathon. But these two I wanted to do in a separate video. One, the Festa Readathon video was getting longer. And two, I wanted to do a separate video since these were part of my ABC Author Challenge. So the first one I read is called Winter Tide by Ruth Anna Emery's. Um, so this is my e-author and that was actually the next letter I was up to read. And so I was really glad to read this one. I chose this one for the prompt uh, illustrated cover. And yeah, was really excited to read this one. Um, this is one that I was, one of the ones I was more excited about that I had found. This one is really heavily based on the Cthulhu mythos. Um, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, sorry if I am. But you can tell that the author is very familiar with Lovecraft and that mythos. And I wasn't familiar with Lovecraft other than just by name. Um, so I learned a lot from this book, like we had to keep looking up the, you know, the different names, um, and the mythos and learn about Lovecraft himself, which he was not a very nice man. Uh, but yeah, I think if you love the Cthulhu mythos, you would probably really enjoy this. You would probably be able to better understand it than I was. That is one thing I really struggled with. Normally I struggle with keeping characters straight when there's a lot of characters, and there are a lot of characters in this book, but I really didn't struggle with that aspect. It was just more, it was a little bit above my head, <laughs> um, and so I did have to kind of reread to kind of understand things sometimes. I think some of it was the phrasing the author used as well, but even so, even not fully being able to grasp everything, I really enjoyed this book. Um, I was drawn in by the characters right away and absolutely loved it. So the main character is probably Afra Marsh for sure. Um, and so basically there's three different race of men. There's men of air, which is kind of like us, just, you know, your, your average race. There's men of water, which is what Afra and her brother Caleb are. And then there's men of rock, which... Initially, you don't think they really play a part because they are considered the mad ones um, and they're kind of shunned, but they end up do playing a little, well, sort of playing a part in in the story. Um, and so, yeah, basically, you're kind of going back and forth and learning the backstory. So, Afra and her brother Caleb were grew up in Innsmouth, but they got wiped out and taken and imprisoned. Um, and Afra and Caleb ended up being the only ones that lived. Um, and then the only way they got out is when the Japanese were in prison and then they released the Japanese, they released them alongside them. And so they are kind of befriended by a, a Japanese family um, and Afra ends up staying with them and then Caleb ends up going back to the East Coast. So Afra is contacted by an FBI agent named Ron Spector to help him, um, he needs her help to for some of her family's rituals and such, and then trying to figure out if the Russians have access to those rituals. Uh, so that's kind of where it takes place. They end up going to Miskatonic University, where they have all their old family books and journals and such from Innsmouth. And they're researching, trying to figure out not only information on this ritual, but whether the Russians have accessed it or not. Um, and so it's very academically based. Um, and then you don't really quite fully grasp, or at least I didn't, where the story was going. Like I was wondering where it was going, how it was going to tie up. And it ends up tying up in a very beautiful way, although not really how you expected it to, um, because basically, I mean, the whole story, you're, you know, oh, the Russians, whether they have access to this ritual and, you know, have been able to do it or not, but then what happens in the end and how the story ties up really doesn't tie fully into that, so... 
I mean, it does, but it doesn't. But overall, though, really, really enjoyed this. Um, I think if you like the Cthulhu Mythos and you understand it, you would really enjoy this. You might enjoy it if you're kind of like me and just like like the academic touch. Um, I think the characters were really relatable. And yeah, I thought this was very beautifully written, even in its complexity. So this is one I'm going to be keeping on my shelf. I'm going to be rereading um, until I can fully grasp it. And then once I can grasp it fully, I'm going to probably reread it just because I thought the story was really really well written and I enjoyed it um and the characters so definitely one I can see myself rereading multiple times um but it's probably gonna take me a while before I fully grasp it so that is Winter Tide by Ruth Anna Emery's um very very good I definitely encourage you to give it a try it might not be your cup of tea but it might so <laughs> definitely give it a try the next book was for um my most anticipated read that was the prompt and so I jumped ahead to one of my iBooks. I did, when I got I, if you've seen the previous videos, I did have to go by the first name. I couldn't find an author by the last name of I, at least not at the store I was at. And so I went with the first name, which does come with a one book penalty. So I do have another I author that I will read. Um, but it's Isabel Allenday and it's Kingdom of the Golden Dragon. So this is actually the second book in a trilogy. The first one is City of the Beast, and I mean, I was able to follow along perfectly fine without having read the first one, but I would definitely say this series is one where you need to read the first one. You, you need to read them in order, just because they reference things in the first one, and it was kind of like you could follow along, but it was getting like your information secondhand versus being there, and so I really wish I had read the first one first. But even so, I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was very beautifully written. It is a young adult book, but it's for adults too. Like she talks about that there's like an interview in the back and then some questions in the back. And she talks about that, how it kind of spans both. Um, and yeah, I think it's written well enough that it's enjoyable, you know, like in this a young adult fashion that's enjoyable for young adults but the story that's there is really enjoyable for adults as well and so it basically I would say the two main characters are Alexander and Nadia who they meet in the first one so the Alexander's grandmother is Kate and she is a journalist for the International Geographic and so in the first one they go to the Amazon and that's where they meet Nadia and then in this one, um, Nadia ends up coming to visit Kate, and then she brings her grandson, and they go to the Himalayas. Um, and they're going to the Forbidden Kingdom, and there's the Golden Dragon, which is kind of um, like a very symbolic relic for the kingdom, and it has an important meaning for the king himself. And so yeah, they, they go to the Forbidden Kingdom and kind of get pulled in. Uh, and there's, you know, people try and steal the golden dragon, there's kidnapping, um, very, very fun. So you have all these different characters, and then you also have Tenzing, who is a llama. Um, he is training the prince, I might butcher his name, but I think it's Dil Bahadur. Uh, and he's training him, like, he's been training since he was six, year old, six years old, he's 18, and he's going to train until he's 20, and then he's going to go back and he'll descend to the throne, um, or ascend, I guess, whatever. But he'll take over the, the kingdom um, from his father, but he has to reach us, he needs training to reach a certain level of enlightenment. So it's very heavy on Buddha and, you know, Buddhism and such but very very enjoyable and then these yetis play a part in it uh, which is fun and that's how it starts off is with Tenzing and Dil Bahadur and they find the yetis and they end up saving the yetis and then the yetis come back in later um, but very very enjoyable at first I thought it was I mean it is you know kind of fantasy but I thought it was a little out of the realm of 
possibility with as young as Nadia is. She's only 13, um, and Alexander is 16. But they made Nadia seem a lot older, but she's only 13. But then when you kind of get more of the backstory, you understand that maturity and such. So I think, you know, if I had read City of the Beast, I would have gotten that a lot quicker than I did. Um, but yeah, I think this was very beautifully written. I'm definitely going to be getting the others in this series. I want to read them. Um, and I, yeah, it was very beautiful. I want to read some others of hers as well. But I loved in the back, it had not only like an interview with her and then some questions, but it also has a have you read and it has different little information on her other books. Um, and so I think this is an author that I'm definitely going to be exploring more of. Uh, I think she writes beautifully um, and I definitely can't read more of her. And I enjoyed the little part in the back because you learn more about her as well, um, the author herself. So I did want to share a little snippet here. Um, and so this is at the end. It is a spoiler, so if you don't want a spoiler on this book, maybe jump ahead. It's not a huge one, um, but it definitely does spoil the ending a little bit. Um, so go ahead and maybe sign off here, and I'll see you in the next video, or stay on and listen to what I have to say. Because I just thought this was very beautiful. Um, it talks about death and kind of the viewpoint of these people. And I don't know, I, I loved it because I've often thought about this and I think, you know, it's definitely harder on the people left behind, based on my beliefs anyway, it's harder on the people left behind than the people who, who die for sure. Um, or not for sure, because we don't, we don't know what happens after, but that's kind of what my beliefs are. And so, anyway, spoiler, the king ends up dying, um, during the struggle why these people are trying to steal the golden dragon and such, he ends up dying. It says, Neither his people nor his family, who loved him so, wept over the king's death. They believe that weeping obliges the spirit to stay in the world to console the living. The correct thing to do was to show happiness so the spirit can be content to go live out another turn of the will of reincarnation, evolving in each life, until it reaches finally reaches illumination in heaven or nirvana. And I don't know, I just I thought that was so beautiful. Um and it really just kind of captures what I believe because I believe kind of two separate things. I think either when you die, you either, you know, you're either go to heaven or hell. Um and I think I don't believe that you necessarily need to be religious. I think it's based on your heart. Um, whether you go to heaven or not, uh, I do believe, you know, kind of that people can be reincarnated. I do believe that, you know, ghosts and such, but I think it just depends on the situation. And I think if that's not true, then on the opposite end, I think there's just nothing like you're, you're just gone. Um, and so I think, you know, that dying itself isn't so scary for me it's the manner you're gonna die and I think the people that get left behind like that's what I worry about the people that I might leave, leave behind or that I'm gonna leave behind um and such so in the manner that I'm gonna die if it's gonna be long and drawn out or anything like that but quiet <laughs> she hears something she's been very barky this week so yeah I mean absolutely beautiful book I like you know, the different glimpse into spirituality and culture and such. Um, absolutely beautiful. Definitely check out this author. And like I said, if, if I think this one, a lot of peop different people would enjoy. This one, I think, you know, specific people would enjoy. But I did think it was beautifully written and beautifully complex. And I, I love them both. So... Definitely, I encourage you to check out both of these. Both of these are going to be staying on my shelves. I don't know that I would read others from this author, even though I'm going to reread this one. Um, but this one, I'm definitely going to be checking out more from this author, and I'm definitely going to be completing this trilogy. So, 
I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.